Hello dear viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about linear motors. So let's dive right into it. Now first thing we have to understand what exactly is the problem with motors because we have been using them for puppies for almost 200 years. So what's the problem? Well, reality is in our world we need a lot of linear motion. For example, trains, they go in linear motion. Your CNC machines, they go in linear motion. X, Y, Z, they do not spin around. So inherently we have a scenario where we have to convert a lot of rotational motion into linear motion. That inherently creates a cumbersome and a messy situation. For example, if you type a linear uh, you know, actuators, this is the image that you're going to get. You're going to have a motor and you're going to have shaft that's going to uh, you know, go plus and minus. Okay, everything is awesome. But here's the, you can notice that like motor shaft is here, then you have a gear, then you have another gear, then you have a screw. That that screw has a nut that nut is doing now you can inherently understand the energy is taking much longer path and because of so many components is far more cumbersome and messy as in like uh, there will be some backlash and this is the another aspect of it because you have just so many stuff you have a lot of frictional losses you cannot bypass this you will have frictional losses and then we come to backlash because you cannot machine a gear that is like you know there is no backlash like you can try to and you can come very close but reality is like for mass production equipments good luck with that you can reduce that number be mindful you can reduce that number and there are some high quality equipments that are almost zero but that's that's the point that's why like high end cnc machine they always have encoders on top of encoders they could have rotary encoder for the motors and they will have linear encoders for the carriages to make sure they are dead precise so that creates inherent issue and backlash is like built into the system you can't do anything about this like gears will always have a teeth will have a little bit of tuk -tuk -tuk. and if you try to make them too tight the tolerance of manufacturing cost will go ludicrously high then you have if anybody of you have worked with 3d printers you know like you have a screw you are like okay i'm gonna have a nut and that nut would be awesome no you need to have spring in and another nut just to create a backlash free experience and that's also very low end equipment so Reality is there is an absolute demand for linear motion. However, rotation to linear motion conversion is not a super awesome process. It's a very messy, it's very cumbersome and very frustrating to deal with for engineers and people who manufacture the things that we utilize in our day to day life. So what's the solution? Well, the simplest way people describe it is like take your induction motor and assume it is a bunny roll and then you unroll that roll. That's it done. Go home. So. If you unroll a motor, you get almost the same component. Now be mindful, in motors we generally have stator and rotor. Here that statement does not apply too well. So people generally use the statement of uh, primary and secondary. Primary generally has the electricity going through it and secondary is the uh, uh, you know part that is moving. Be mindful, it could be inverted, especially in the case of uh, trains. So that's why like uh, rotor and stator still applies, but because you are not rotating, so why are you calling something a rotor? So primary, secondary are used. Now removing translation stage is very desirable for motion. For example, you have a stepper motor, you have a screw, and then you have a nut, uh, and that nut is locked, constrained in like it can only move back and forth, and then you do it. Inherently, that has so many steps. Inherently, especially here when you have the nut, uh, you know that's basically turning the rotational motion into linear motion. You have a lot of friction, backlash. It's a step, and you may not have the luxury of placing the motor directly here you may have a scenario where you have to fold the motor which most of the situation do so that also becomes another hassle so reducing mechanical complexity is a desirable thing because if you have ever dealt with any sort of uh, you know equipment that you know have things like this you know for a fact they have lubrication and lubrication has this magical ability to extract dirt out and dust out of things I'm like, I have 3D printer. My house is quite sealed, like especially in this floor. Somehow this puppy has more dust than everything else, which includes my computer, which has fans. So this happens, like lubrication is very frustrating to deal with. Like companies actually have filters, seal rooms, on top of more seal rooms, just to try to manage that. So if you can just remove it, it's like, hey, what about no? And then it's like, everybody's awesome. So you want to reduce mechanical complexity because all those complexity not only creates a hassle for you, but also creates hassle for uh, other things, which includes lubrication. Simplifying use and maintenance. And this is another critical aspect. For example, you have a multi-million dollar factory producing uh, goods. You do not want to be like, okay, shut it down. Why? Okay, that grease jammed up. Okay, that this happened or this happened. Like every time you shut down your factory unplanned, it costs you a boatload of money. So you do not want to do that. If you have this sort of system, it inherently reduces the parts count. So your engineers or uh, you know staff who are maintaining the system, they rather than maintaining 50,000 things, they only have to maintain, let's say, 10,000 things. And that's a significant higher probability of you catching any fault before it becomes too late. And that's awesome. So simplifying use and maintenance and improving reliability and efficiency because the less steps you have, the inherently more efficient you're gonna be. And because of the simplicity, you have reliability because there is old saying, complexity is the enemy of reliability. You do not want complexity. You just don't, no, just don't. 
so what are the types that we have now there is this one type which is technically not a motor it's like a different kind of thing but it's classified as piezo motor now piezo electronic equipments are generally stuff that reacts to electricity either it expands or contracts now you also have heard of piezo crystals that are utilized for speakers and microphones something similar now somebody came up with the idea what if we start to quote unquote crawl this puppy but be mindful this touches things uh, this is used everywhere basically it is very suited for low power equipment meaning your camera lens generally camera lenses are very big consumer of this and uh, some things that are not very big but you need to move them very precisely like almost inch them close to each other then this puppy is awesome and it can move in uh, you know backwards and forward there is no like it, this animation may give you a feeling that it can only move in this direction yes awesome but you can change the sequencing basically how those piezo electronics are expanding and contracting and you can get another impact there are other motions i have provided a lot of video now please do check them out you have other system where it almost looks like it's crawling literally it's touching tuk, 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 tuk. it's literally uh, small feeds that are moving it back and forth it does give you the benefit of having very low slop and very high precision that's awesome again especially if you are dealing with laser optics things of that nature those things are desirable but not really suited for like huge things these are small precise awesome everything other than that don't worry about this then we come to induction motor now induction motor the biggest problem is that it has low efficiency now like why the heck induction motor we know induction motor induction motors are awesome and if you do it properly you can achieve almost 90 percent efficiency or even 95 why why this puppy has low efficiency well reality is generally wherever it's used for example trains they will have stator uh you know onto the bogey awesome everything awesome but here's the rate track has the part that is uh, uh rotating quote unquote not rotating would be correct but it's like it's locked it's like crawling on top of it that's why i said the primary and secondary as you so pri uh, primary which in, uh, the part that has electrical energy goes into the bogey and stationary that is uh, like you know secondary that's that's basically allowing you to react towards it it's stationary it's bolted to the uh, tracks now here's the deal that gap between uh, rotor and stator is huge now how to make uh, your motor efficient reduce that gap if you have gap this bad this good this better this awesome so you inherently want that gap to be as small as possible now uh, when you're talking about normal traction motors the motor that drives most of the locomotives those are awesome like they have very tiny uh, gap uh, basically between rotor and stator this puppy uh, things that are used in trains they have huge gaps so inherently they are low efficiency now in some case of uh, manufacturing where you have conveyor belts things of that nature and you have the luxury of making them very close to each other you do get back the efficiency but be mindful this is a lower efficiency option and it is sloppy so if you want precision control meaning is like i want exactly four millimeter you will like because you will have a lot of oscillation you will like okay oh it overshoot okay undershoot ah it is like twing, do, 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 do. it will like literally settle down in oscilloscope so fundamentally it's sloppy but it is long range compatible meaning you can make them long as in hundreds of kilometers long and this puppy is cheap compared to all other options like piezo puppy this does not scale up do not think about i'm gonna run a maglev on this because inherently you can't it touches the thing it will be worse than wheels this puppy does allow you to make that and then you have synchronous motor now these are backbone of uh, precision industry for example your cnc machine that directly utilizes linear motions they will use that because they will have electromagnet and they will have permanent magnet benefit this gives them much higher uh, basically this goes from asynchronous to synchronous synchronous inherently is a bit more efficient so you are talking about like three to five percent more efficiency and more Oomph, more precision where it's like no if i'm saying five millimeter move goddamn five millimeter do not go up or down so this is really good for those sort of scenario so if you have to have a linear motion for very long range utilize a linear induction motor if you need a uh, linear motion but like only for one or two meters go with this system it would be far more precise be mindful but it would be ludicrously more expensive as magnets neodymium magnets of high calibers are expensive so what are the use of that well uh, generally trains for example this is the linear induction motor train it's common and not common at the same time because if you type it you will find five six uh, options where people are actually utilizing that but it's not very common simply because it does have benefits it does have also have side effect now in any any metro system where you do not have ludicrous amount of speed but you have to go through a lot of gradient meaning your track is like underground underground tweet, wherever it goes like tweet, then people have like dude we cannot use uh, uh, any other thing other than this simply because you may feel like cog rails that are inherently inefficient much slower this because it's reacting directly to something that is bolted it's magnetically it's doing like this it's grappling the track magnetically so it does not uh, slip that much so it's very good compared to like same amount of energy same amount of kilowatt energy that you are dumping into the this motor versus a rotary motor rotary motor will have risk of slipping and if you have a lot of people good luck so that's why uh, this is used especially in metro system where you do not have to go very fast 
but you really have to go through a lot of slimes, uh, slopes and things of that nature. Those are desirable. And if you have a scenario where your tracks are slippery, for example, you have leaves and you have eyes, those things sometimes mix up and become something magical like a lubrication and then your wheels are like lol. So in those sort of scenarios, this would be awesome. However, this puppy does not go fast. Meaning if you try to send it fast, your train will literally levitate from the uh, you know tracks. You will go boing. And you will like wait a minute that's dangerous yes it is that's why it's never used in hundreds of places that's why you will like shinkansen train that runs on wheels they do not utilize this inherently it's like if you start to put too much because you are talking about magnetic energy you will be like creating a repulsion force and the wheels that are used for this puppy generally have much larger fans so it does not like you know go yeet out of the system so it it has uses but it has limitations then we have cnc machine now that's every tom dick and harry who can afford this are going to do this because this is one of those things where it's like once you get a cnc machine into this it's like uh, what the hell i was doing with my life like all the high-end laser machine engraving machines uh laser cutting machines especially lasers that are like you know multiple kilowatts they are utilizing this puppy now it's like every tom dick and harry is like no if we can afford this go for this there is no discussion here industrial manufacturing facility for them uh, you know uptime is far more important than the raw capital cost that goes into that puppy so they are also loving into this then you have camera lenses i'm pretty sure most of you have experienced this then we have roller coasters now roller coasters also utilize this puppy because it's much better launching mechanism compared to any other thing it's like you just have it shwing. you don't think about it it's like put energize the coil shwing. No, go home, sweet dreams. So there are some amazing uses of this puppy. Not for everything, but for things that it needs it, it's the only option. Then we come to the aspect of what we can expect in the future. Well, the right tool for the right job. I specified like it does uh, suit for some trains, but if your train is like, hey, I'm going to go like 600 kmph, do not use that. For that, you have to use a completely independent magnetic system where you're utilizing levitation. So again, those are also inherently linear motors. But you get that point, it's just more scaled up. And then it will also allow one thing that I really want in this world is cableless elevator. Now you may have noticed that we humans are no longer pursuing making huge, big ass buildings anymore. It's like why? Well, cables are the issue. Uh, buildings are limited by the elevators. For example, uh, in India, you will have many buildings, apartment complex that are like 20 floors. But as you go up, you will notice the floor sizes are going up. I'm like, why? Why the heck you are doing that? That inherently is bad from a business point of view because it's much better to sell multiple count, uh, you know, customer rather than like selling few rare customer because you could have a scenario which has happened and does happen regularly where it's like, yeah, whole floor is unoccupied because like you are charging too much money for that. Then I realized like uh, one of my person who was dealing with this sort of thing is like, yeah, the lifts are the limitation. You, because if you put like, let's say, instead of uh, selling 10 flats on uppermost floor, you are selling, let's say, 50 flats, you can like your building can handle that the building is like i got this i was overbuilt for this reason alone it's like i got this but how the heck you move those many people lift cannot do that because each shaft at this point in time only has one lift in it that is inherently wasteful you have to have multiple shafts that is ludicrously wasteful and that creates a choke point basically you cannot pack too many people so uh, basically the building goes up but the cost does not come down because inherently that's what we think about is hey land is the most expensive thing because you cannot expand land so it's like okay land you bought this land and you're making 20 story building it should be cheaper but it goes expensive simply because of elevators so many companies are working on uh, basically cable less elevator this can also do some fancy things like going side by side which i do not think will anybody will use but good to have uh, but this has the luxury of like having a shaft and the shaft is acting as a motor and then the secondary thing that will go up and down so you can have one shaft that can easily accommodate four buildings so let's say your shaft is 20 floors long and you can easily have four elevators that are all moving in one direction and then one is goes in up they go most to the next one and going down then you can really pack people into a tall buildings so right now we do not we do not have luxury of tall buildings at this point in time and people engineers who have built uh, basically Bush Khalifa they are like dude I genuinely do not think we can actually extend the cable uh, length anymore because cable itself becomes too heavy once we start to stretch it to like you know 500 meters 600 meters cable itself becomes too heavy so we have to go to cableless elevator only then we can have truly populous kind of building I'm not talking about like luxury buildings where it's like you know it's a fancy show of peace I'm talking about like actual useful building where you have thousands of people living there you have to have cableless elevator 
higher quality uh, uh, and low cost goods should be also become more feasible now again because of inflation we will not notice it but it will happen simply because more uh, you know better machines uh, lower downtime equals more profit everybody wins in that scenario mass production will make it more commonly used meaning things that you are utilizing right now if it's coming from a high end machine there is would be a chance a linear motor played a part into it and then it's one of those things is not supposed for common people because if i say induction motor you you are surrounded by induction motor all the time bld is more sir if you are using computers you are surrounded by them uh, but like this sort of linear motor not so much unless you are talking about pso motors and those, those you are surrounded by especially in every camera equipment but other than that this is one of those tools that will allow us to do amazing things but it will be always behind the scene so this was our presentation on linear motor hopefully you have liked it learned from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me a disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching